Hello, we're here on the set of the Jaguar football show with Coach Dawson Odom with the old coach, Coach Pete Richardson, the 17-year legend at Southern University, brought us five SWAC championships, four black college national championships. Coach, good to have you on the set. Well, it's good to be back, uh, be on the set with you and Howard. Uh, excited about being here. Coach, <clears throat> Howard came to me uh, probably, uh, shoot, at this point, almost 30 years ago, it seems, <laughs> and said, uh, you know, man, we ought to do a show with Coach Pete Richardson. And I looked at him and I said, you know, that'd be a great idea. And I got to give always Howard his propers. It was his idea. And uh, sure enough, uh, we got the show off the ground. And we had a great 14-year run with you. Howard, talk about what makes well, you want to do this co show with Coach. I mean, you think about a guy like Coach Richardson that um, – has done so much and was doing so much at the time. I mean, developing young men. I mean, that was the, the key thing that often goes unstated about coaches like Coach Richardson. And so it was only proper that is, uh, the community could see and hear from Coach Weekly. I mean, was, and, and fans want to hear that. You know, they want to hear a piece. You know, Coach, you know, you had a phrase that used to say, hey, if you bought a ticket, then you deserve to be a coach. You can call a play as long as it was in the, uh, it was in the stands. Uh, talk about that philosophy a little bit <laughs> with the fans. Well, we had a lot of coaches at Southern University when I was there, and uh, apparently the, the ones in the stands, uh, well, they were buying the tickets and they could call the plays. But, uh, <laughs> as long as it didn't reach me down on the field, we're, we're, we're in great shape. <laughs> I like that. Coach, you know, Howard's talking about making successful young men. Got to call out some of those guys. You know, uh, Elvin Sterling, Lindsey Scott, uh, John Williams, who played in the league and became a Navy SEAL, Jerry Wilson, 14-year career in the NFL. The lawyers, Carlos Leach, Kenya Rounds, Channing Warner, uh, all those guys are doing well in life to coach. Uh, on on your player coaching tree, Jabbar Jaluk, Heishman Northern, Rashawn uh, Harrison, Elvis Joseph, Lawrence Hart, Sean Wallace, all those guys uh, played for Pete Richardson. On your coaching tree, Eric Dooley over at Prairie View, Terrence Graves at Grambling. Who are some of the others on your coaching tree, coach, that are out there? doing good things and what does that mean to you to know that you coach successful men as well as you are uh, had successful men who work for you and learn from you well I'm proud of my assistant coaches and uh, I think they're doing an outstanding job as far as the organizations they're with now and of course Mark Orlando is out of Alabama State's doing a good job up there and uh, also uh, uh, you have Miller I think he's up there with, with Eric at uh, Prairie, Grand, View. Prairie View at the present time so uh, anytime that uh, you have excellent people around you that does an outstanding job, and it was a process at Southern University, and I think Dr. Spice gave me the opportunity to come to Southern University and had the opportunity to, to pick some outstanding coaches. And I think the main thing I was looking for is whether are you a teacher of fundamentals, because you had to be that on this level, because a lot of the players that we had wasn't what you call polished players yet. Right. Mm -hmm. You had to get a little bigger and stronger in a couple of years they developed, but. Uh, they did an outstanding job for me, and I'm real proud of those individuals. Coach, what are some of your fondest memories from the sidelines at Southern? <laughs> uh, I had a, a lot of those. I think the thing that uh, I remember the most, I think we played Jackson State. Okay. And, you chasing the referees? Yeah, tell us about that one. I mean, I think everybody remember that one. <laughs> I think it was the last part of the game. It was real close, and, and Jackson had the lead, and, and uh, I think – we stopped them, and the officials wouldn't let us snap the ball again, and they let the clock run out. And all of a sudden, I thought that uh, that was uh, a little that you shouldn't do. I mean, we had some discussions on that aspect. And, but those are some of the memories you always have, and especially playing with some of the, against some of the teams we played against. Because we had some good football teams. Yeah, Jackson, who was Grambling, uh, uh, played great football. The legendary Eddie Robb never beat you, Coach. Well, you know, I was fortunate. You yeah. Know, uh, having... well, 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 no, let's talk about that in the sense of, you remember, I asked you this question one time on the set. Coach, what is one of your goals? What are your goals? And you say, hey, it's to win 10 straight by you classics. I mean, you know, we never would say that public till now, but. Uh... <laughs> well, I knew if I, if, if I could be consistent in an aspect because I knew Grambling always had a great football team. They had some yeah. excellent players. And if I was consistent on, on being able to compete with him, because I know his teams were well prepared, they had great athletes, and, uh, and if we can compete with them, then we can have a good job of, of dealing with the, our competition on the schedule. 
And then I want to bag up something. You know, the Swag used to do this thing called Bus Tour. And I remember picking you up in Dallas one time uh, for an alumni conference, and you said, man, that was rough. But you said you loved the Bus Tour. Talk a little bit about that and maybe one or two stories from that. Um, well, I, I think the Bus Tour, I think, really solidified the, the SWAC conference. It gave you a chance to, to see some of those individuals uh, on the buses, have a chance to talk to them and communicate and, and see what they're doing. But the relationship that you, you develop over a period of time was second to none. And I think that uh, uh, it had a way of bonding uh, our conference together because everybody pulled for each other. You know, you know, I didn't pull for Gremlin. But I pulled for them when they didn't play me, so right. that was the opportunity. <laughs> I think the, the first thing that I remember about that conference, when I came in the in, in SWAC tour, and I had no idea what they were talking about. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I met the, the bus out at the, uh, the hotel, and, and uh, you know, coaches were on it, and uh, I got there a little late. And so, uh, you know, the seat in front was open, so I sit down there. I didn't even have any idea that uh, uh, whose seat that was. It was empty, and I sit down, and the rest of the coaches looked at me and explained. And I said, "It Robinson." <laughs> <laughs> you said you take it over, right? You take it over. <laughs> and so I got to get up and said, "No, no, no, you just sit down right there." So you know, from then on. I didn't have any problems. <laughs> <laughs> it's that Netty Rob seat. Coach, talk to us a little bit about SWAC football then and now competition-wise. What, yeah. what is the difference you've seen from the 90s uh, in two th early 2000s to now here we are in 2018 uh, on, on the competition level in the SWAC? Well, I think that, uh, like I said, you had some excellent football teams uh, when I first started because a lot of those individuals – uh, spoke well for the conference when they moved on to the pros. I think what's been happened is that uh, you have a diminished of uh, the players. I think that, uh, uh, we don't have the quality athletes that we used to have. Of course, uh, we, a lot of the coaches did an outstanding job of preparation of those athletes too, getting them bigger and stronger in the competition level. Uh, but I think uh, when you look at the game, I think the, the speed of the game has changed drastically. Yeah. It's a wide, more wide open game. It really when is. I first came in, uh, you know, you was chucking duck and, and, and of course, running the football. If you could establish that uh, with a huge offensive line, you could be successful. Now they didn't open up, people throwing it around. It's almost a quarterback league now yeah. with wide receivers. Uh, and also the timing of the game is such that uh, uh, you can almost, you know, it's can't tackle any longer. You know, you have to kind of hesitate where you hit a guy at now, and, and I think that's been changed a great deal. And, of course, some of the rules have changed to make the game more exciting, too. So uh, and that helps out a great deal for the fan base. Coach, talking about competition, who were a couple of the uh, biggest competitors you played against uh, when you were coaching Southern uh, for all those 17 years in the SWAT? Well, I think the, probably – was probably one of the most dynamic players was that Alcorn. I think uh, Steve Aaron McNair. Steve yeah. McNair. Yeah, I, I think when, that. when you speak, uh, think of him uh, playing in, in, in our conference and, and, and not only dominating it, but he stepped up to the next level, and started dominating up there. And yeah, I thought that uh, that was an outstanding. Uh, 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 speaking of, of, of the SWAT conference of players like that, and he was given an opportunity. Uh, we had the exposure we need, and I think. Uh, Another thing, uh, we played on Saturday, that Saturday morning thing, we played uh, uh, in uh, Houston uh, where, uh, on the morning television show. I thought it was a dynamic thing that they had at, mm -hmm. at, at the time. That they really helped, gave the exposure that we need for our conference to get some quality athletes. Yeah, I think that was an 11 o'clock game. Right, and, yeah. uh, one, You know, that was rare because it was shown nationally. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, as you look back at it now and – transition away from football as, as a coach, what advice would you give to a coach starting out today in college sports? I mean, I know you're still watching and following, but what advice would you give that, that young man that's uh, looking to be a Pete Richardson 25 years from now? I think the biggest advice I can uh, give an individual is that, uh, which I had to learn how to do, is to be patient because it is a process. Uh, the teams that's going to take over is going to usually have a huge uh, rebuilding job <laughs> because they're not going to give you anything that they think that uh, you're going to be successful with right away. So uh, you get that and, and uh, have a great administration and give you the opportunity to bring you some great assistant coaches in 
and then they have to get out and recruit. And uh, I think when you look at the athletes, that uh, they're going to have to uh, be a good selection of student athletes because you're not going to be able to get a lot of five-star individuals. You're going to have to have some great assistant coaches that can teach fundamentals, uh, and hopefully with the get them a year or two and get them a little bigger and stronger that they can develop into the good student athletes and that's what you're working with. Well coach, one of the questions I get asked probably uh, monthly in football season is how is Coach, Re coach Rich and what's Coach Richardson doing? So what does a retired coach do these days, coach? Well I think the, the main thing that uh, when you're coaching you don't have a t chance to see your family a great deal. It's true. When you have your kids and, and all of a sudden you look up and they uh, they start school, and you look up, they graduate from high school, and all of a sudden they're gone. And now it gives me a chance to, to spend some time, and, and especially, uh, you know, to be selfish with your wife. You know, she takes a lot of that responsibility, uh, that you're not there uh, trying to put uh, food on the table and making sure that uh, uh, you have a successful program and spend some time with her and do some traveling and, and, and being in a position to do some things that uh, – you want to do, yeah. I think that uh, which pass you by, uh, by a great deal of time. So hopefully that uh, you know I'm excited. Uh, a little Larry starting at fourth. But now I'm, I'm kind of getting used to it. Very good, very good. <laughs> hey, you know, and, and one of the reasons um, not you here, but this weekend and we're recording this was the first annual because the school has made the commitment. Every first game will be the Pete Richardson Classic. Talk about that going from, as you said, you know, sometimes um, letting go is tough coming up until this day and what this weekend means for you and all those players that gave you commitment for four to five years of their life. Well, it's, it's a special feeling for me because when you come into Southern University, as I came in from the outside, you know, Southerners don't usually let people come in from the <laughs> And yes, a lot we're, of, we're a little clannish <laughs> around here. A lot of individuals gave me about a year or two because <laughs> uh, Southern didn't keep the coaches around long they enough. They don't buy, huh? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, you know, uh, and you come in and, and, and I knew they had some good student athletes on their team because we had played them a year or four up in Shreveport. Mm -hmm. I knew they had some individuals, uh, athletes on the football team, and Dr. Spice gave me an opportunity to come in and, and uh, select the people I need, some some good coaches that uh, came along with me that were able to uh, teach fundamentals, and I think that's what you had to, had to do at that time, because before then, Southern University was in a lot of their football games, but they found a way to lose, Yeah, yeah. And, and also they found, you know, I had a number of coaches a short period of time, so you wasn't there long. And uh, I got the uh, players to buy into what we were doing. And, and once we did that, you know, we had some individuals that were kind of hot-headed. And a lot of them <laughs> I'm real proud of because they bought into our system. And, and once they bought into our system, then uh, we're on, well on the way. But more than anything else, I think that uh, the fan base, I, mean, I really have to attribute them because, you know, wherever we played, you know, once we got rolling, then uh, we had just as many or more than our opponents. Yeah, you're absolutely and, right. And that speaks well for this uh, institution and helps not only the recruiting of student athletes, but also uh, we recruited for the university too. And I think that's what enabled us to, to really to get the exposure we need throughout the country. And, and a lot of individuals realized that, you know, when Southern University came to town, that uh, we were going to come and, and, and have a good time. And I think that's what meant all of that. Well, Coach, you're absolutely right. You know, in your era is where the term the Jaguar Nation came from because, you know, at one time we were traveling 15-plus thousand people on the road every time we had an away game. But uh, being a native Baton Rougean, I remember a good season in Southern was 6-5. and five. I mean, literally, that was, you know, when I was in middle school, high school, that was about what the standard was. So you spoiled this, Coach, you know, five uh, uh, SWAC championships, four black college national championships. You took Southern to some heights that it hadn't seen since the Mumford days. So uh, I want to thank you for 14 good years of rolling with you and <laughs> allowing us to work with you on your show. Always a good time with you. Howard, you had something? Yeah, you know, one of the things that I think goes understated is, is you had little to work with, but you got great results. And, uh, you know, when I talk about that, it, you know, just talk about working through the, those adversities because you didn't have the best of facilities, didn't have the biggest recruiting budget, 
but you found ways to make it work. Just talk a little bit about that, because there's some small school coaches that say using that as an excuse. Well, I think that, uh, you know, we're fortunate enough, like I mentioned before, we I had uh, in the process some, some great assistant coaches and were able to go out and, and select student athletes, knowing that you weren't going to get the five stars, that you had to get the star and a half if it was anything, mm -hmm. and see him down the road uh, for two or three years to get a little bigger and stronger to be able to compete. And I think more than anything else is, is like I mentioned before, Dr. Spikes, then Cass came in and he gave us the exposure we need to go out and go throughout the country to showcase what we had at Southern University. Yeah. But uh, anytime you get that and 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 and, uh, and the players bought into what you're trying to do, you know, uh, you have a lot of social issues now going on with, with different universities, and I think you have to have good senior leadership. And uh, when you have that on your team, and, and a lot of problems the head coach can't solve. Yeah. You know, before we get to him, if you got see good senior leadership, is that they'll handle that part of it. And I think more than anything else is that uh, if you're able to showcase your uh, uh, program and throughout the country in Atlanta and, and, and of course, Chicago, and then we went to uh, Las Vegas, our people like to see that. And, and, and then, That was a good trip. You know, that's a good trip for all of us. And, yeah, he said for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> what happened in Vegas stay in Vegas, guys. <laughs> uh, that was a good win. That was a good win. Yeah. So uh, and I think that, that means a great deal to us. And I think it's, uh, I'm excited about seeing some of the players because I, don't, I know a lot of them, you talking about 17 years, a lot of them have kids now and it's, it's yep. old enough to go to college and I'm proud of them. And, and uh, a lot of them were not what you call uh, professional athletes, but they were good uh, uh, citizens. Yeah. Right? And that's what you, uh, I was working for and, and have them to, uh, be able to provide for themselves and, and, and that relationship that you built with them and they built with each other was is, is, is strong and, and I'm not proud of that aspect of it. Well, this weekend you're gonna you truly earned it, Coach, and uh, you know I just hope you enjoy it and bask in it because uh, every guy I talk to that played for you, they love you now. Yep. They didn't like you then, but they love you now. And uh, you know, and that's the true test of it is is um, when you look back, you realize that you poured a lot into it, taught them lessons. I even had a player out south and he started to cry, man, when he started talking about. What he went through with you as a coach, how you discipline, but it changed his life and probably saved his life. Incredible. Well, you know, you look at it from that aspect. A lot of them were, were came from dysfunctional families too, and, and uh, they were able to come together. And I think that's the main thing. We didn't have a whole lot of eyes. We had a lot of we's in our football team. Yep. Because everybody was involved in those victories, and I, I made them uh, feel like that. Uh, you know, I'm going to treat you and respect you. The only thing I wanted you to do. If, uh, whatever you did, tell me the truth. And if you tell me the truth, I'm going to fight for you. And I think that's what they end up more than anything else. Uh, like I said, we had a few that uh, kind of bent the rules, but overall we had good senior leadership, and they controlled that aspect of the game for me. And then a lot of times when it got to me, they had already solved the problem. Well, Coach, I want to say thank you. Appreciate you coming in today <laughs> and appreciate all you Thanks did lot, okay. during your time at Southern University. And uh, we look forward to all the festivities this weekend. Okay, thank you, and I really appreciate it and excited about it. All right, All right. take care. <laughs> Tell Miss Rich hello. Okay. All right. <laughs>